Hi, this is Connie. Today I would like to share with you how I approach brush calligraphy. So first, I would like to show you some lines that I drew with the dual brush pen, a micron pen, and a dip pen. And just looking at this, I would think that the lightest one is obviously the micron pen. But in reality, the first line is drawn with a Leonard principle in a dip pen and the second and the third line are both drawn with the Tombow dual brush pen uh, with the brush tip and the third line is drawn with the micron pen the size of the line is 0.45 millimeters so the point I'm trying to make is that the Tombow brush pen can achieve hair lines as thin as a Leonard principle can and even thinner than a micron pen so when I do brush calligraphy what I want to achieve is to really take advantage of how much it can flex and how thin it can go so I approach writing with the Tombow a lot like how I hold my um, oblique holder my thumb is very close to the flange and it's almost, you know, right, very, very close to the paper. And the dual brush pen, I hold very, very close to the tip because when you lower your center of gravity, you're just much more steady and you can achieve better control and therefore better hairlines. So because the Tombow can flex a lot compared to other brush pens, this is a zebra brush pen, and while I love it very much, you can see it's very small. So the difference between the thin and thick strokes are not as exaggerated as the Tombow. So you really want to take advantage of that flex, and therefore I usually write a lot bigger when I write with a dual brush pen. So I'll go through the alphabet from A to Z and mention any points that comes to mind. I want all my letters to still be at around a 55 degree angle. And with the rodeo paper, it's really easy to know where that angle is without any tools because if you just line the lines up diagonally, that is a 45. So 55 is approximately right there. So for the A, when you want to achieve that hairline, you want to think about the tip of your brush just barely gliding over the paper. You're not using any pressure. Just think of that your your the tip of that fine nib is just dancing on the paper on its own. You have nothing to do with it. It it's just going. You don't want to control it, you don't want to hold it so tight because when you hold it tight, the lines get unsteady. So to write the A, I start off with the hairline and that entrance stroke is always a compound curve. Gradually increase the swell and don't be afraid of it increasing flexing a lot and then gradually I'm doing this in slow motion lift your pen so you can clearly see that transition from swell from thick to thin and go up to finish the oval and now you want another swell going down and gradually lift it and go up now I see a lot of people practicing this. I'm not quite sure what this does. Um, what I would suggest practicing is if you want to achieve this look, what I would suggest practicing is going from thick and then gradually lifting your pen. That's not a very good one. There we go. 
gradually lifting your pen and turning because if I demonstrate with a pointed pen that is very similar to what I want in my brush calligraphy. So you can see here, there's a clear transition between the thick and thin, clear transition between the thick and thin here. Now I know some people do not want their brush calligraphy look to be like so. They would prefer something, um, a more modern style look, like I see, you know, something like that, that you're not trying to take advantage of the hairlines. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just focusing on how to achieve those hairlines. And for the letter B, breakaway point, push the hairline down, and gradually transition to a thin stroke. The same principle of calligraphy applies here. You want ovals in your B. You do not want your Bs to look like this. C. Don't be afraid to take it slowly so that you can really get that transition from the thick and thin. See, I don't like what I did there. That should have been a hairline. This means I was being careless when I was transitioning. So if I do that again, also it helps with a Tombow if you write really big it helps you make the transition easier because you have more of a space to make the turn.
with the letter L or any um, letter L and B, it's really easy to make the swell just one straight line like the H because the tendency of the brush is not to go in a curve. So you have to really make, make a note, mental note, to make that turn. What I like about the Tombow pens or brush calligraphy is that sometimes, say, in point of pen, I would lift after the swell to continue here. But because it's a brush, it has that fluidity so that you can continue. See that you right there, again with the problem like the G, I was careless right here. There must be a distinction between the swell and the hairline. See that line right there could have been thinner, but I was, my pen direction was not correct. So that resulted in a thicker line and I'm, pu I'm pushing on it instead of just letting it go. Your arm has to move the pen for your hand not to press on the paper. So if I write bigger, you'll see more clearly. The shape of my hand does not change. The arm moves up. That's all for this video. If there are any questions or if you would like to see me do more on brush calligraphy, please comment below and let me know and I'll be happy to help.